I just wanted, you know, I just wanted to see my granddaughter. She was six months old. Yeah. Sacrifices we make. That's right. For family. That's right. Oh, no, that she wanted me to get this other shot. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you for joining us for our meditation today. Tonight we have uh, Richard and Helen and Lori and Daniel and Ava and Dennis and the invisible angels and masters here to help us during this meditation. So let's stand and invite the light into the room and then start our meditation.
Thank you, O oh Father, Mother, God. Thank you for your loving kindness that streams from your heart to all hearts around the world. Your love is what created time and space, a playground for us, a divine school groom full of opportunities and choices. Send your angels, send your Holy Spirit into this room. Bless each one here and on the broadcast. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, friend, beloved God, you truly are a friend. And to see you as such is knowing that we are in good hands. We are in the arms of the Almighty. We are divinely guided and inspired. We send our love back to you. Thank you. So tonight we'll have a lights off meditation again. And Let's turn off all the lights. If Ava, if you can get those lights, I'll get these ones. couple things before we start. With your eyes closed and in absolute stillness reflected back to you will be a feeling of peace, a feeling of security a sense that all is well. Nurture those thoughts. Nurture those feelings in your own awareness. And then in the darkness, in the stillness, in the emptiness, cry out to the Divine Mother, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and will. And it's only by going 100% that you can break through that darkness and into the divine light. You have to put all your might, all your will, and all your strength in this meditation. And as a group, in this holy circle, the angels will come to each one of us as divine representatives of God to show us something new.
something holy, something so sacred.
There is a beautiful presence in this room. The spirit of the living God. Angels and masters. Perfected ones, our elder brothers and sisters of light, the Divine Mother, in all her beauty and glory. They ask us to pray, to chant Om for the world, for those who are suffering, lost, for those who are in hospitals, in nursing homes, for those in deep need at this time. Let's chant Om and know that we're releasing the light of God from our own souls into time and space that will help alleviate pain and suffering for those that God knows where they are. our eyes closed. Let's visualize the earth in the middle of our room here. As we step out of time and space, we see the green blue marble terra and we see the eight billion people here on earth and all life is sacred the water the mountains the trees and the forests let's chant om and send light love energy into terra step out of the universe and we see the universe spinning in this room created by the love of our Father Mother God and let us chant Om to the universe and fill it with love and light Om. moments now as the angels come let us pray our own personal prayers for our family and friends for our own needs 
as they are listening. And lastly, let's put our hand on our hearts, on our heart chakra. And like a beam of light that comes up from our God presence down here, let's send a beam of love to our Father, Mother, God, that all in every heaven, in every dimension, will see like a burning light shooting through the universe. So I'll turn the lights back on. Welcome back, everybody. Just relax and soak it in. Allow the light to permeate every particle of your being, every particle of your soul, and every particle of your mind. The Heart Center Vista here is called the Temple of Clarity. We are part of the Heart Center organization located in Livingston, Montana, with our messenger David Christopher Lewis. And we have a mission and a vision. And our mission is, within our Heart Center community, we realize personal enlightenment through our higher self and share the Ascended Master teachings of our love wisdom throughout the earth. Our vision is that we live in sustainable golden crystal age communities in joy and in harmony with Mother Nature. Using solar sciences of the spirit, we radiate light and we live and love as one. In almost two weeks, we will be having a full conference of light here. David will be here with live messages from the Ascended Masters. It will be February 15th, 16th, and 17th. It's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and part of Sunday. 
what happens during these events. The Ascended Masters just don't come without leaving us something or leaving us the same. There is a transformation that occurs on many levels. Their words are sometimes directed to situations around the world, but oftentimes directly to the people that are in the audience at the time. There are dispensations that they announce. These are huge releases of light that affect the entire planet. There is spiritual work that is done through the songs, the prayers, the meditations that are amplified and magnified by the ascended hosts of light to prevent cataclysm on the earth, world changes, wars, bring in new light, and also heal the planet from energies like Fukushima and pollution on a, on a larger scale. The ascended masters and the angels use us like crystals and they use our chakras so that the light can pour through us in time and space for the greatest good for mankind. Each conference is different and each one has its own uh, take. But by coming to these conferences or coming to a conference is a memorable life event. And I have flyers on the table. I have uh, uh, information that I can give you online, where to go to sign up. But if you can come, even for a day, don't miss it. You will have many interesting experiences that you can take home. So, for today's topic, I would like to talk about El Moria and the picture that um, I just got framed. Eva, do you mind bringing the picture to uh, so I can put it in front of the camera so Patricia Murphy, who's online, so that she can see it? It's on the table behind you. And we all want to say hello, Patricia. Here we, let me turn the camera and we can all say hello to you. Hello, Patricia. Hello, Patricia. Oh, and there it is. Bring it closer, Eva. Yeah, a little closer. A little closer. Beautiful. So this is a painting by Marius Michael George. It was a gift from him to me. Uh, I, probably because I've ordered so many of his prints, he felt I needed this one. And um, Helen and Richard uh, framed it for me. It's a beautiful frame. 
the frame has little hearts on it. Uh, that's why I chose that one, and it, it matched the gold on it. And uh, he's wear, wearing his blue uh, cape and and looks like his Punjabi. And he has a beautiful uh, golden uh, turban on with a sapphire or a blue diamond in the middle of his sapphire uh, on his turban. And uh, he's got a sword, not a sword, he's got a the wand of power, I guess that is. A, uh, rulers would always carry this stick. And on the end of that one has a, a, a crystal globe. And uh, go ahead and show it to uh, Lori. And, and she hasn't seen it. Um, Ava thinks quite the masterpiece. He was one of the uh, first, I guess, masters to that I felt really came to me for some reason. Um, and years ago when I was first on the path of the Ascended Masters, they always talked about this Master El Moria. And, you know, how stern and how you know, like a disciplinarian he is and how strong he is. And I had just, it just rubbed me wrong for some reason. And um, I would, uh, uh, I would, could not really get um, connected to him. Even though that he was the guru of my guru, which was Elizabeth Clare Prophet. That was her guru. And uh, she loved him so much. But everybody talked about, you know, the will of God and how, um, you know, he is fiercely connected to being in the will of God. And so he became the, the Chohan of the, of the blue ray or the blue energy. And so there was people that were uh, known in the Ascended Master activity to be known as Blue Ray people. And Blue Ray people are, uh, they usually uh, had been known to uh, fly off the handle, uh, be very uh, short in their communications, meaning, you know, they would just, you know, almost condescendingly you know there was there was a lot of strange blue ray energy and it didn't rub right with me at all and so i had a you know i had to have a talk with him, el moria many times in my uh, youth about you know why is it this way why is it that way um just getting to know him later on i had a a a, a another connection with him where he was totally love. He was totally affirming everything that I was doing, supporting everything I was doing, agreeing with everything I was doing, um, encouraging me to do what I was doing. And um, it was a whole other shift I had in trying to have a relationship with this uh, 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 ascended master, and um, and from that that message that I got, I had a, a whole new opinion because now I have my own take on who he is from my own experience, and not other people's experiences. And those Blu-ray people that I had met. Uh, in the Ascended Master activity, ended up being um, um, not the highest example of the Ascended Master teachings, <laughs> as I found out. And I related more to the pink ray people, the love people. 
So my that's my story with El Moria. Um, a beautiful uh, ascended master who's committed to God's will and loving people into God's will. With that, I will pass uh, the mic over to Daniel and he'll share his story with El Moria. All I can say is right now I'm actually feeling his presence fully. And hopefully you can feel this transmission, his presence within you, which is your very presence. And yes, it is a very, very strong, aware willpower that is really unconquerable, unalterable, fully immersed in God's will. I guess that's my um, story of Elmore. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, I've never really, um, I've never really seen the Ascended Masters as separate beings. They always felt like they were part of me. Even Jesus, I, I never felt they were separate from me. It's very I interesting. But it may not be that way for you. And uh, maybe that's, that's all I have to say. All I have to say was I found this meditation really peaceful tonight. It was really, I felt just love and ener good energy in the room tonight. So it was a good feeling. We can all sit here and talk about ascended masters and gurus and upper gurus. In the end, we are here in this room. Who are we? Are we just chopped liver and we have to look up to all these ascended masters or what have you and so on? We are God ourselves. We have all we need to do is awaken the God within us ourselves. And we're not going to, uh, as far as I'm concerned, sit here and, and start worshiping all these uh, other uh, 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 apostles or whatever you want to call them. Let's start with us. How can we wake up the God within ourselves because we are children of God? I like to use them, you know, like my heroes, you know, like my examples, you know, like they are there to help us, not they don't they don't want us to bow and kiss their feet that's not what they're there for there are older elder brothers and sisters like mother mary you know just sends love and light 
And all we have to do is say, I accept. I accept the love and light. And reading the lives of these great teachers is also very inspiring because they talk about um, their trials on the path, how they've been crucified and resurrected and ascended. And knowing the path uh, by following their examples makes it easier for us. Every person that makes it is a, is a blessing. And, and each one of us, in God's eyes, are, we're all equal. We're all, all part of the, of the whole. So it's, it happens sometimes that people get in uh, idolatry and, and they lose sight of their own divinity that lives inside them, their own, their own God flame. But that happens for younger souls a lot. But also, you know, when we're, even when we're older, we have to know that God is inside us, the same God that's inside them, the same God energy that the angels, even, you know, people get hooked into angel worship. And I've seen that also. But we have to just keep humble, keep loving, keep our eyes on our God flame, and move on. That, those words of wisdom, I completely agree with. But on a personal level, um, I would like somebody to tell me here tonight how, ca how I can, after we look at all these different saints, gurus, guides, how can we get something within ourselves that awakens tonight and say, you know, that's absolute, that truth was absolutely right. And I'm going to walk out of here and I learn something I'm going to apply that will help my fellow man, mankind. So who can give me that direction? Well, I think, I think uh, we'll just pass the mic around because that's so important. Uh, when I look up at Jesus, you know, I know that um, he said the kingdom of God is within you. And that inspires me. And when I look at St. Germain and I, and I know that he said that, you know, freedom is one of the highest uh, aspects of the soul. If we're God free in our, in our soul and our minds, that's a powerful tool, tool also. And when I look up at Mother Mary and I see how she has loved millions and millions of people into the kingdom of God just by teaching us simple tools like the rosary and praying that's another a avenue that we can use in our daily life to um, uh, incorporate our journey so that we can get there. And when I think of my teacher Elizabeth Clare Prophet, and I saw how hard she worked for her attainment, and she maintained it with hours and hours of prayers, hours and hours of meditation, you know, and I, I and I I saw how she, how hard she worked, you know, to, for every person she dedicated so much of her life. That's inspiring me me to go. You know, I can do. You know, I can help. You know, I can do more. Each one of these teachers, you know, have a story behind it. Yogananda, you know, is another example how he taught the science of meditation and pranayama called Kriya and the Om technique and the healing prayer and so many other tools that I use. And so in his books I find great inspiration, great tools that I can incorporate into being a blessing to my family and friends and 
in people that come to this temple. Each one of these uh, masters and angels have a, a, a wonderful story. Archangel Michael and his blue flame sword. If people knew that you could call upon Archangel Michael and all the warrior angels in heaven into a situation like you have, you know, you know, like in a car accident or uh, things that are going on in the world, you can invoke his presence here in time and space. If people knew that, the power of that call, you know, people would be making prayers to Archangel Michael 24 hours a day. Each one of these pictures has a tremendous background, a tremendous story of light. Padre Pio up there, his life story of uh, all the amazing miracles that have, he's, he's done uh, from you know healing the sick and um, being in two places at one time, the gift of uh, he had the stigmata and many, many other little things. It's amazing these lives and how if we didn't know that that person exists, what an emptiness, what a missing piece of the puzzle that would be for us. And so when I have these pictures here in the temple, each one of them is uh, as a remembrance for me and also um, I, I invoke their presence. The Buddha, how he sat underneath the, Bo the Bodhi tree and he said, I will not move until I get enlightened. And it's that kind of like determination that gets you over the hump. And so that's one, one reason to have these teachers um, these memories. Um, maybe Daniel has another uh, insight on it. No, I like what you said. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly. That's kind of how it is for me. Like I say, for me, even though it seems like they're separate entities from me, I've never really felt separate from them. I've never seen them as like these separate beings I necessarily look up to. They feel like they're a part of me. They're, they're actually, uh, yeah, a part of me that, that maybe is... Um, maintaining this high awareness and and as as I am aware of it myself then it completes the picture so to speak so I, I that's all I have to say I don't know if that means anything to anyone but uh, but yeah of course they're inspiring to me but I don't really feel separate from them. So it's interesting. It's a very interesting uh, dynamic for me. I, I, and actually, when, when you talk about their stories, it actually sounds like my story. <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of Yogananda in me. I've seen a lot of uh, many of these great masters in me. And their lives weren't that easy necessarily here on Earth either. And... Um, it's so beautiful to actually walk in their footsteps to, you know, to have them be like our elder brothers, you know, to, to, because they really are the, the highest part of us. And, um, you know, I'm forever grateful. I, like, what can I say? I mean, and yes, I'm, I'm worshiping myself here, and I love I love all the ascended masters. Um, so beautiful, so grateful. So that's all I have to say. I mean, I, I'm just totally grateful and blessed, and so are we all. Daniel, first of all, I have to say you you have to looks like a Yogananda, you know. And so, um, what's a good thing? Okay. So when you walk into this temple here, Dennis, there is an absolute phenomenal energy in here represented by all these masters surrounding us. And often when I do walk out after a meditation, 
I feel enlightened, refreshed, and ready to tackle the world. But still, the, the world of the year after is so fast. There have been so many teachers uh, in, in coming in and out of our history. The one fundamental question I do have that I've been struggling with, I was going to ask uh, Lori. Are you with us, Lori? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. This is the question I would like somebody uh, answer is that when we cross over to the other side, do we come back as ghosts and spirits? It's, it's, do we come back in another, or do we go into another dimension? And uh, I'm puzzled by it, and I thought you might be a good person to ask. So as I understand it, because I'm not saying I know everything, I certainly don't. Well, not in this form yet, <laughs> but as I understand it, we have a spirit body, an etheric body, that is exactly our form. So you've got a, a spirit body that looks exactly like you, Richard. And when you pass, uh, what I've been told by several is that you raise out of your body the silver cord which is attached through your umbilicus just like you were to your mother it attaches your etheric body to your physical body is severed and then you go on but you still have this form that you are in it's not seeable by the human eye but it definitely is a, a spirit form that carries your soul and then you progress through until you become more and more and more um, rarefied, is that what I, I can say? Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen like this, but through experiences and through working on yourself both here and the other side, you become more uh, etheric. So do we have two bodies? Can we experience that now on this side of the world? If you did any kind of um, astral travel, yes. Okay, you can you can leave your body at night. The the etheric cord is completely um, elastic. I mean, you could go to Mars and come back. That's how long you know it's. You're able to communicate. You know, you're able to travel with it. But uh, I have not done astral travel yet that I know of. Well, some people do it in their sleep, and uh, other people, I, there was a book that I read when I first reawoke re it, and um, I believe it's called The Eyes of an Angel, and it was about a gentleman who had, um, <laughs> he woke up one night, and he was on the ceiling of his bedroom, looking down at himself and his wife in bed, Except for he didn't realize it was himself. He said, who's that in bed with my wife? <laughs> Very indignantly. And then he realized it was himself, and he realized that he was floating on the ceiling. And of course, that ended him, poof, he's right back into bed again. But it kept happening night after night. And each night, he would venture a little bit further. Finally, he said, I wonder I can move. You know, do I have to just float here? Maybe I can move. And through intention, his mind, he was able to project himself down through his house, and then he ventured down the street, and then he was able to venture, you know, quite a few places. But it takes practice. It takes practice. It's not something you're going to know how to do right away. Um, but that's basically, that's astral travel, and you wouldn't be traveling, obviously, in your physical form. You'd be traveling in your spirit form in your etheric form. So we actually have many bodies. They become more and more um, energetic and less and less physical. You're welcome. Yes. But ultimately, you're not even 
I would like to add a couple of things to that. Um, so when we die, um, it's very important that you know you have um, practice meditation so that you can consciously leave your body and when you are con when you are like supposing I'm on my deathbed I would uh, what I would do is I would go and continue to meditate and and look out my Christ Center and call out to God um, and then I would go into that place of pure allowing, pure surrender, and pure um, witnessing to what is happening. Because I want to stay, I would want to stay perfectly conscious and perfectly clear because it is the most holy, sacred thing besides birth that we can have it is a spiritual experience because you will be actually I will be actually leaving this body and going into spirit and when that happens um, flower Newhouse talks about how this beautiful archangel comes into the room to help you to the other side and it's not a scary thing like in Hollywood where they have the grim reaper there uh, you know this evil thing <laughs> but I know for a, a, a fact that uh, there are a lot of people that have a lot of um, baggage and a lot of regrets and having not resolved their life completely haven't haven't made peace with people in their family or friends or something that would not allow them to to take that leap of of love and light in the arms of God and absolute faith so um, there is like a meditation called the death meditation and years ago I used to practice that and in Buddhism they have um, they have many many different types of prayers that you can do and uh, techniques called the bardo and it's a class that you can take at the um, the temple the Buddhist temple in Escondido um, I took one and it's very fascinating where they go into great detail you know how to die correctly how to and dying is it's more like you nothing really happens you're just reborn into spirit into this love and light you know so this time on earth is over there's another place that you uh, that is a timeless place that is beyond here nothing happens to your consciousness your your awareness that's all that's still intact but the body might you know the body goes away but then there's this light body that you have and every single thing that you do and every single good thing that you um, have done on earth and everything that you've learned comes with you as your treasures in heaven as your light body that you have built over your lifetime now uh, Saint Paul says that um, every star differeth from another in glory and what that means is how much time you've spent in meditation how much time have you spent in prayer how much of that effort uh, is going to determine how brightly your your light body is going to glow um, because it all matters every jot and tittle matters so to prepare ourselves for going to the other side um, resolve any conflicts make peace with every person you know you want to be able to float like a bubble out of your body into the light where the most beautiful 
like sunrise will like appear and that face of God will be there of all love. Some people have, you know, so many regrets. One of my friends from high school who's struggled with alcohol and drug abuse and just, made just about any kind of wrong decision <laughs> you could make in life by choosing anger and fear and, and hurting other people. You know, it's like, you know, there's, there's so much regret in his life that it, it would be a very, you know, it, 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 I don't know how he could make peace with, with, with letting go and going away into the light uh, under his situation. So you know, there are, you know, people that, that have that regret, they really struggle to let go. Yeah, but finally, you know, time's up, you're going, you know, there, you have no choice. But Yogananda, uh, he also gave a talk about passing and he talked about he was in a dream and he had, um, he was dying on the beach and he was feeling such fear and he says why is why am i feeling this fear and i have practiced meditation i have practiced going you know you know even this great master and um he gave a a, a teaching about you know just resolving your life going into the light um, knowing that there is something beautiful on the other side. Now, one other thing I'd like to touch upon is the body has a little being called the body elemental. It's a little like elemental being. It's like a little child. And when the body uh, is sick, it gets scared. When the body, and this isn't you, this isn't me, this is, you know, just this be, this little uh, this body itself has its own little um, elemental being that kind of is in charge of it. So the body needs to be known that everything is going to be okay, that it's loved, that it's it's uh, uh, that it will be reborn in the light. And so the body has in itself a fear the body fear, but the awareness that you are, the pure knowing that you are, doesn't have that fear because it's, it's eternal. It's, it's, it doesn't know, it can't even, it's not aware of time. It's, it lives outside of time. So the way to get through that is to stay in the present moment, to stay present and aware of each precious second that's here and then the body uh, and the, the, the worrying about the past and worry about the future kind of dissolves into the now and a peace will come into the room and that's a practice that you do in meditation you stay in the now you stay in the present moment and this and the same thing when we are making the transition you stay in the present moment, you stay in the now, you listen to your breath. You don't listen to the past, you don't listen to the future. You just keep coming back in, in that. And, and as that happens, the masters and the angels will, will help. And as you invoke their help, and they have to invoke the light, you can actually you know, learn those prayers, learn those meditations, put them into your memory for those times when you're or when I'm in greatest need. What happens in the heart center movement is if somebody is making their transition or is very sick, a call goes out to David Christopher Lewis and he has the mantle of the prophet as the messenger of the Great White Brotherhood will make a special prayer for that person. 
And that prayer um, goes out to the lords of karma and for the greatest dispensation of the dissolving of the personal karma. And at that time of the transition, another call is given to David where he makes the call for the, the, the light to come and take the soul. And also after that, there is a special service that we perform in the Ascended Master activities that the soul, uh, it's called the Estrella. Estrella in Espanol means star, but it's also the Divine Mother, uh, uh, one of the Elohim, comes, we do these, these prayers for the soul of using the, uh, the call to Estrella, to cut, her, cut the soul free from anything that binds it to, uh, or that is clinging to the earth, so that it can fly up higher and faster. In Catholicism, there's a novena to Mother Mary. I think Ava says, is it nine days? It's nine days, rosaries to Mother Mary. Mother Mary has a healing temple that she takes people that have been, um, that have made their transition. And this healing temple is in Fatima, Portugal, in the etheric or in the spirit, just above Portugal, Fatima, Portugal, where she takes them and she uh, babies them, so to speak, loves them with this green emerald light of healing. And so we pray for that also. So in the Ascended Master activity, there is a tremendous amount of people, any time anybody in the Ascended Master activity passes on, there are these prayers that are happening around the world, these very powerful and directed prayers that help the soul uh, pass on. Now, if you're a Christian, uh, the pastor will say, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, they kick the shovel of dirt on you and they keep walking on. But <laughs> in the Ascended Masters activity, there is a lot of work that is done on behalf of the soul. A lot of spiritual prayer and work. And if the soul is uh, qualified for the Ascension, where they graduate for earth, from Earth, uh, David will get the message, there will be a special ascension service done for that soul, and um, one of the ascended masters will announce if that person has graduated, made their ascension, and... They're not be coming back. <laughs> <laughs> they're not coming back. Yeah, so, Dennis, for the longest time, I've been wondering this specific question, and uh, you are quite knowledgeable on the, on the subject that we're talking about now. When I had my stroke about a year and a half, almost two years ago, uh, I went into a transition where uh, I was gone. I didn't belong to this world anymore, and everything turned white, a, a, a dirty white, you could say all around me and my thinking was that's it i'm leaving but somehow all of a sudden somebody said yeah hang in there there now we're going to get you back here there were <laughs> but they were were the, the uh, paramedics okay they, they were probably doing something but i wonder why did not keep on going when i thought i was leaving Why did it get yanked back, so to speak? Because it wasn't your time. It was an experience that you were supposed to go through to maybe enlighten you, to wake you up. So that the rest of your time here, you would spend, um, hopefully, looking for more enlightened things on Earth. But it was not your time. Um, one of the guides that Dennis was talking about, one of my guides, is Archangel Azrael, and he is the Archangel of Transition. And
And uh, he has explained when my husband was asking him what happens at the time of passing. He said, basically, he said, I will come and I will be there. And when it's your time, I will take your hand and I will pull you out of your body. He said, you'll be able to see your physical form. You'll be able to see everybody in the room. You'll be able to hear everything that's going on, but they won't be able to see you anymore. And at the appointed time, I sever the cord, and then you come with us to the other side. So it's as simple as that. Um, those who don't believe in archangels probably wouldn't see him. They might see, yeah, they, but he's, I just asked him, he said, I am at every single transition, every single one. That's his job part of his job. The other part is to console those who are left behind. That's the other half. Very important job to those is to bring proof of life to those who are, you know, in grief. Um, as far as your going or not going, what he has explained to us, as I sit with him sometimes in circle, is that there is a precise moment that you are born and a precise moment that you will pass in the Akashic Records. Along the way, you may have one or two what they call exit points, where you can or you cannot pass at that point. Your soul actually is asked, are you ready? Do you want to go? Have you accomplished what you want to do? You can leave. And if your soul says, nope, you come back. So whether you heard that question or not, or you were offered that question or not, that's probably what happened. I know I had a personal event where I was, I could have passed, I didn't even realize it, but I was having a really, really hard time breathing, I was at altitude, and um, I was struggling for air. And I just started crying and crying, and, and I don't know who I said it to, but I just said, I'm not ready to go yet. I haven't accomplished what I came here to do. And that was it. The next morning I woke up and things were relative. I was feeling better, still not 100%, but I was feeling better. And it wasn't until several months later when I was in a class called uh, Psychic Contracts that they came to me and they said, well, you, they told, talked about these exit points. They said, you just had an exit point. I said, really? They said, yeah, in Peru. You just had an exit point. If you had said, I'm ready, guess what? Mm -hmm. You would have gone that night. Yeah, yeah. But you weren't ready. Mm -hmm. So whether you remember or whether you heard it or not, someone asked your soul, are you ready to go yet? And you said, nope, haven't accomplished what I came here to do yet. And so you stayed. I think you're right. You know, that now, now you bring that up it comes back from the subconscious to the conscious that somebody made a decision there and uh, most likely it was myself mm -hmm. said i'm not ready yet that's right okay that's i right. have to, way too many pictures to frame no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> especially a lot of dentists right <laughs> like to share one more thing I don't you know know how how much this relates to all of you but uh, maybe somebody can get something out of this or maybe it's for one of your relatives or something um, but from my personal experience um, you really awaken from being a, a person you don't no longer see yourself as a person even as a light body you don't you don't even you like you real you 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 tune into this oneness that you are actually this oneness pervading all creation and then what seems to happen is that your light bodies uh, integrate this awareness um and and they 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 seem to grow in you or and and reflect through you even through your physical form um, and that's that's what I feel an ascended master is. It's somebody who's who's gone um, 
really into that oneness and they're living from there but they just appear to be a human being but they, they don't have that kind of consciousness at all they don't feel separate from anything they don't so that is how it is for me I don't know how it is for any of you but that's that's how it seems to happen so it looks like we're dying and all these things, but really none of that is going on because who's who's dying and who and who's who are the who are even the ascended masters? How can they be separate from you? How could it be somebody else? It looks like it is that way, but it's it's not. You know, you somehow know that it's not like that. You you're you're aware of this oneness, and that's that supersedes all of these experiences, whatever anyone tells you in this world that things are separate, it, it's not like that for you. I don't know, but I, I feel that all the Ascended Masters would agree with what I just said. That's their reality. Thank you, Daniel. I just want to share one other thing about my, my dad when he was passing, when he was in the hospital. Um, I went to visit him uh, with my sisters, and he was in the emergency room, and and I said, "How you doing, Dad?" And he says, "I'm fine. I'm yeah, I'm ready to go, you know." And uh, oh, by the way, uh, could you ask them what kind of drugs they're giving me? Because I was floating up on the ceiling not too long ago, and um, I. You know, I couldn't get back down. And my a little information about my dad is that, uh, you know, he was telling everybody, my sisters and everything, you know, find out what they're giving me is really good. Um, so he I apparently had a bad experience when he was younger about any kind of religion. And... Um, and he totally uh, would discount anybody that ever had any kind of belief system. But he had his own personal experience right there in the hospital. Uh, when we get ready to go, there's many different little things that kick in um, that kind of like we, we start to separate the bodies start to separate one from the other, and uh, flying flying out of your body becomes very easy. <laughs> it, it probably doesn't help with some of the good drugs they got today too. Um, so he knew that he was not the body um, before he passed. He knew that because he saw it for himself, and that was quite a blessing for him. Yeah, there's, you know, the layers, the, you know, the, what all the connecting tissue, spiritual tissues to the body start to dissolve. In the Bardo, it talks about where the soul is in the body and how to move it up through the channels and then out. And having kind of that kind of knowledge those kind of uh, tricks, I would say, you know, helps during, you know, when the passing is taking place. Also, the Tibetan Book of the Dead seems like a real morbid book, but it really talks about how to use your mantras, use your affirmations, because that's going to help propel you into the highest possible heaven worlds and how to get there is, 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 is it's a mastery of the mind it's a mastery of the body if you and it's a mastery of your own soul and so all these prayers and techniques they are tools that we're learning that we can use in those hours and in a way, it is like being on the cross. It is a crucifixion of sorts. And, and, you, 
And you know from the teachings of all the ascended masters that they've gone through these trials and tribulations and how they've, they've worked through it. And knowing that you, f you feel alone, knowing that there's um, this dark night of the soul, but at the end of that is a beautiful tunnel of light. Uh, you can just wait for it and know that, uh, 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 that there is this beautiful moment this most glorious event is coming. The Divine Mother herself is on her way. There are angels that are escorting her. And there's prayers that you can do to help um, ease your own body, ease your own mind, and take mastery of that, that event. So those are a couple of books to take a look at. Um, there's one book, I, there's a couple books I have. One is called Graceful Exits, and um, that's a, a, a book on, by a, a famous Buddhist teacher I don't remember right now. In the Tibetan Book of the Dead, there's the Egyptian Book of the Dead, if you have more Egyptian-like things. But these are all universal teachings of the ultimate letting go the ultimate surrender to God, and the ultimate um, divine experience. With that, we are out of time. We've gone over our timeline. It's 10 after 9. Let's close the uh, prayers, this meditation service, and we have some special cookies from Mexico we'd like to share with everybody. So, um, Daniel, do you mind blowing out the candle and doing the closing prayer? Our gratitude knows no bounds. Our mirth knows no bounds. Everyone is eternally blessed. I fully accept that now for everyone and everything. It's all in me. Can we all see it that way? Can we see that there's nothing outside of me? That it's all a dream of separation? happening inside of me. That if I don't feel separate anymore, then a different kind of dream starts to show up. So I'm so grateful for this. I'm so grateful for this divine uh, children dream, divine happy children. May we ever rest in this awareness. May we ever rest in this awareness.
Thank you, everybody, on the broadcast. God bless you, and we will see you tomorrow night for Mother Mary's Rosary. Good night.